This is a painting uh, entitled The Sour Experience by the uh, sometimes called Czech German artist Gabriel von Mox, probably painted in the late, very late 19th century or early part of the 20th, 20th century. Gabriel von Mox was one of the leading painters of his day. He was born in 1840 and died, I believe, in 1915, something mm -hmm. like that. I had a very productive life. Uh, he was born in Prague, current Czech Republic, went to art school first in Prague, then attended an additional art school in Vienna, finally making his way to the Academy of Art in Munich, where he was also a student. And after graduating from the Academy in Munich, he was on the faculty there for several years before opening his own atelier or studio in Munich mm -hmm. and working from that studio primarily in Munich for the rest of his life. Not a bad city to choose. I think. <laughs> I'd be very happy to spend the rest of my life in Munich. But like many uh, artists of the late 19th and early 20th century, in fact like many artists of any era, he's he somewhat drifted into obscurity after his death, even though in his day he was one of the most sought out uh, academically trained painters in, Ger mm -hmm. in Germany. And as you and I have discussed in the past, he had a very, the course of his life's work was quite interesting, perhaps eccentric and unique. Uh, he began, as we've discussed, doing academic paintings. Um, of uh, religious themes mm -hmm. in the early part of his career in the 1860s, uh, doing commercial illustrations of the popular works of German literature of the day, mm -hmm. uh, including Faust and um, Oberon and uh, other s such works. And then uh, his work evolved or transformed in the late 19th century, as we discussed, in a very mm -hmm. unique way. Well, it was interesting to see you know, he was an artist that was very little known to me, and to see some of the paintings that range from these beautiful female figures, um, you, you know, in religious ecstasy, or um, you know, with with mystical and allegorical connotations, and you realize what an academically proficient painter he was, but also that he was part of this larger movement, this fascination with. Um, sexuality, with the occult, with spiritualism, that's very much characterizes um, that period and, and the, the things that were sort of inspiring artists to take subject matter in different directions rather than the standard historical and genre subjects prescribed by the Academy. Yeah, and he, I guess we should add too, he was um definitely not of the Impressionist school of yes. European painting, which is most well known in the United States, for example. Mm -hmm. um, he was intrigued, I think, by subjects closer perhaps to the symbolists, mm -hmm. you know, uh, subject matters that, in which he explored states of mind, interstates of mind, rather than the observed world per se. However, in the last part of his career, career he was concerned not only with um, interstates, but also with things he did observe with his own eyes in his studio, and particularly uh, the behavior of monkeys, and we see a great example of that here. You know, as you pointed out, uh, in the mid uh, part of his career, he became very interested in the occult, mysticism, spirituality, and he often depicted religious subjects in states of ecstasy, where he was exploring the tension between their physical beauty and, and serenity and their perhaps inner turmoil or inner uh, um, heightened emotional states. Mm -hmm. In the last quarter of the 19th century, he encountered the theories of Charles Darwin, uh, as expressed through uh, Darwin's main German uh, exponent, Ernst Haeckel. And those theories really captivated Gabriel von Mox. You know, Jennifer, for his entire life, Gabriel von Mox was a collector of things from the natural world. I mean, following in a tradition that had been mm -hmm. continuing for cent had been had started centuries earlier in Europe. You know, the Wunderkammers, the cabinets of wonder, the collecting of oddities and curiosities from the natural world. Well, Gabriel von Mox was very interested in such material from an early age, collecting prehistoric stone tools, skulls, skeletons, uh, and other objects, ethnographic mm -hmm. material. Well, it's interesting because at the same time he was building those collections, some of, you know, these great 
German princely museums were, were being formed and opened, and so it, it definitely fits in with part of that larger culture. So in addition to his interest in the occult and mysticism, he was interested in, and fascinated by the wonders of the natural world. And when he encountered these novel theories of Charles Darwin, as expressed through Ernst Haeckel in Germany, he was taken by them, and it appears that in the latter part of his life, the, the last, let's say, 25 years of his life, his work turned from the depiction of beautiful women Often, often exploring their inner tension, to works <laughs> depicting the monkey, and in particular exploring the humanity of, of the monkey, as a way, I guess, of evidencing the theories of Charles Darwin that, that uh, man had, man, humankind had evolved, and their closest relative in the animal kingdom was the monkey. Well, I think the interesting thing there is that, you know, obviously somebody who had the academic training that, that Marx had, and also was on the faculty of the Munich Academy, somebody who approached things from that perspective, and we all know the academic tradition involved, you know, studying the model or drawing from cast and studying old masters, that when he was intrigued by these theories, that um, he studied monkeys, and, um, and, and directly he lived with them, right? He did, yeah. He had a menagerie of actual living monkeys that he maintained on his estate his country estate near Munich, and he actually bred these monkeys, and they were, as I said, the principal subjects of his artwork in the latter part of his uh, career. Well, and it just, it, it takes that interest even a step further by, you know, he'd be so personally engaged with them and, you know, was surrounded by them, and they were part of his daily life, and there's, you know, pictures of him holding monkeys and, and a wonderful work that depicts the monkeys at the dinner table with uh, him and his wife. Yeah, it's a hilarious painting in, 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 my, in my collection. <laughs> it's a uh, mixed media, principally gouache, I think, opaque watercolor. And his, he, he had, the artist has his back to us. His wife is at one end of the table, eating, uh, uh, cutting her steak or a roast as if nothing is unusual. And at the other end of the table is one monkey that appears to be perhaps eating, and the other monkey appears to be reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and you could just, I think in your mind's eye, you can envision this eccentric living yeah. uh, uh, environment that von Mox had created in the last part of his life. It's quite a household. <laughs>